and welcome. This is Faux Sunglitz with Cookie Without an Appointment. I'm here doing a very, very emergency video about the new State of Play Street Fighter 6 trailer. As you can see, I haven't started it yet. Just wanted to put a couple of notes out there before I begin the analysis of the video. This is not a reaction video. This is more like a breakdown of what we see with the characters, an in-depth update to the, mytho the mythology behind the characters and what we see now in their state of play. Um, been playing Street Fighter and martial arts games for a very long time and most of you that have been following my content every now and again know that I live for the mythology, I live for the metaphysical properties of my games as I become one with the characters and one with the lore giving people extreme insight into why the characters behave the way they do on a metaphysical level and so this breakdown is more about the metaphysical level of things and the environment. So with that being said, I'm going to start the video and be pausing as I give as much Easter egg information as I can because I saw the video numerous times and I hope that I've caught the majority of things and if I missed anything, please feel free to put those comments um, below the video and if you like this content, please like, please subscribe and also give me your thoughts. Thank you. Here we go. Okay, right now we see Metro City right there. I'm going to put my little arrow right there, see Metro City. Okay, cool. In a fictional Times Square. Okay, ooh, the best headphones I see right there. Giant Attack. Okay, we got our first Easter egg right here. This is actually the marquee for Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. Second Impact right there. Uh, picture of Hugo. These headphones, okay, they're their versions of Beats by Dre and in game. I guess these are the headphones that appear on Chun Li's daughter, Lee Fun, later on in this trailer. We'll, we'll backtrack to that at some point. Okay, I see we got Luke go here training. It's not like a game. This journey doesn't have a real ending. Okay then, hope you're ready to begin. If you want to start off on the right foot in this city, hit the streets. Yeah, hey there, I do this. Never fear loose. And when I get up in Okay, we saw a Statue of Liberty. We saw some buildings. High risers that look similar to what I would have seen in Chicago or New York. Right now we got Al Abigail's scrap metal. They seem like it's closed, but they're setting the stage here. They're setting the stage for us. Okay, what do we have here? I see a statue. All right, this is a statue of Hagar, it seems like. He is an, an aged version of his statue. Okay, oh, there it is, Mike Hagar. Okay, I was right. Okay, keep we're gonna keep on flowing this. Okay, we get a glimpse of another character here with the Mad Gear gang of Metro City. He has blonde dreads. This character hasn't really been revealed yet, but I guess is giving us some insight into who he is and possibly a playable character in this game. There he is at the top of the roof, and he's sporting some glasses right there. Looks like he may have a beard, too, a blonde beard or goatee right there going on. So this I actually like. It looks like there may be some RPG elements to the game, an open world, a walk around very similar to some of the Tekken open world side stories that were in Tekken 4, 5, and 6. That's actually exciting. Hanging off the rim, boy. I've been winning for my kin folk. And I put on for my city from the intro. So we have another introduction of this character right here. We don't really know who he is, but it seems like there's going to be a slight battle with him, but they don't really show it. Our first glimpses of Twin Lee. 
Okay, right now her bracelets have changed. No longer is she wearing her spike bracelets. She's now wearing bangles. These look like maybe 14 or 18 karat gold bangles with black onyx right there, faceted onyx on there. She's gone back to her ribbons, her Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Alpha 3 ribbons in her hair. And her Chi Pao has been modified quite a bit. Her signature Mandarin collar is still there. She now has an opening in the bodice line. Her sleeves are no longer the classic Lego Mutton puff cap sleeves. They now have become flowed, uh, more lengthy, I see, more loose for movement. I like that. No more of her classic cummerbund with the dragon across her, her across her waist, which is nice to see. And she has leggings right here. Ryu, we see Ryu. Okay, this is an interesting scene right here. So, I'm assuming that the headphones that I saw earlier on in the trailer are the same pair that Lee Fun is wearing with her own adornments of some emoji that's on the earmuff. She's also wearing some glasses and she is sparring with her adopted mom. If that is Lee Fun, I assume that is her. She's sparring with her adopted mom, which is actually expected. For those who have been keeping up with the storyline, this is nothing new. If you have not been keeping up with the storyline, at the end of Third Strike, she adopts Lee Fun. But if I go back a bit further, let me correct myself. She actually adopts Lee Fun after saving her from the Black Moons project in Street Fighter V A Shadow Falls. She was then abducted by Urien in Street Fighter III Third Strike because there was some piece of information that she had relating to Project Moons that can help Urien in his G project. And so when he abducted her, that prompted Chun-Li to go after Lee Fun, which actually changed Chun-Li's entire outlook on life, which set her emotion, the understanding of Kung Fu and why she was using it to save people. And after saving Lee Fun, she realized that was more family than she has ever had before in her life and that has given her a new meaning and a new outtake on life. Thus, she becomes a teacher and takes on not only more children, but Lee Fun as the head, hopefully becoming Chun-Li's successor. So this right here shows a very in-depth glimpse of that practice Gong Fu session between adopted mother and adopted child. This is great. And in this, this is very Sifu level, high level Gong Fu right here. Chun Li has finally obtained it. You can see the level of elegance and patience and grace. The the level of a sage that she has finally attained after defeating Urien. So here's our first look of the new character, Jaime or Jamie. He is actually a protege of Yun and Yang with some elements of Gin. So the website talks about Jamie wanting to follow in Yun and Yang's footsteps. Not so much if he is their student or rather a rival or someone who just looks up to them and has acquired some of their moves. So if you notice, Yun and Yang both do different types of do, they perform different types of animal style Gong Fu. One does Mantis, the other one does Crane, which are the separations of two martial arts styles that Master Gin used concurrently together. When he combined both Crane and Mantis in unison, he could perform the Raging Demon. These two styles end up becoming split and they're taught separately to Yun and Yang which in turn seem like it's taken on a different persona with this new Jamie character here. Instead of utilizing Mantis, Mantis Fist or Crane, he's now mixing his own brand of drunken boxing with breakdancing. I like that. Very much an inspiration from Duck King from Fatal Fury. I like that. This is new. This is actually breathing fresh life into a character while adding some originality. We do got the Rufus braid going on right there, though. <laughs> so 
So it seems like Jamie and Luke are in an underground fighting tournament. Let me have some fun. Ready? Then show me. This will be a good fight. I got to back up for that because that's very interesting, especially for Chun-Li. I'm going to replay that again and see if I can capture it. Okay, there, I had to pause it right at the moment. So this move in Kung Fu is known as wielding hands or double overhead slap. This is seen in Long Fist. It's seen in Eagle Claw, it's seen in Mantis Fist, it's seen in a plethora of Gong Fu Shaolin styles. And I can see the way they truly animated her that they must have had some type of motion capture with this to really get the form correct. You can even see as her hand dips into a curl like this, which is the correct form of actually performing this maneuver. For all of my Gong Fu fans and practitioners out there, and that's just amazing. And that move right there from Jamie, you can see is uh, his version of Yoon, Yoon and Yang's up kick. I think, if I believe it's right, it's more, more Yang. Yang has that up kick, but I believe both of them have it too. And when they do that up kick, it, it typically just goes straight up, but he has his own side kick to it. I have to go replay that again. That was actually pretty damn good. I like that. I've, they added a new twist to this. Seems like parrying is back, parrying is back. This is awesome. This is spectacular. And of course, we get a glimpse of this new girl named Kimberly right here, who is going to be, I guess, their next show off. If you go to the main website for Street Fighter VI, it gives you some of the back, the back profiles to the characters and where they are right now. Just a singular paragraph is nothing in depth, but it's enough information for you to connect the dots between the most recent past game and now. I definitely look forward to this game. I'm very, very, very excited. Mm -hmm. Haven't been excited about a fighting game in a while. I thought I was really excited about King of Fighters 15, but man, they really took their time with this and are adding some extra content. I know that there's more yet to come. Personally, at this moment, I'm really interested in seeing how Chun-Li and her daughter Lee Fun plays if she ends up being in the game. Kimberly looks like she's going to be interesting as well. I hope to see Elena at some point in the future. That's just me. But at the moment, I think I may be a Chun-Li main again. <laughs> just looking at the way that they really articulated her Kung Fu. Um, touching on Ryu just a little bit. I'm gonna back up just a bit here to get to dig. Let's get to some Ryu play here. I like that on the website. Here we go. I'll stop here. I like on the website how they say Ryu has now mastered the Satsuno Hado. Like, really go to the website, guys, and check that out. It specifically says that Ryu has now mastered the Satsuno Hado. What that means is for us comic book collectors. When we see the Illuminati storyline between him versus Gil, Gil had put Ryu in a block of ice. And from there, he couldn't do anything except to become one with his higher self. When Ryu reached that oneness of higher self, not only was he able to find true balance, but it was through the darkness he was able to find peace and find himself, break through the block of ice that Gil put him in, and was able to use Gil's own principles against him, thus defeating him and finding the balance between what is the parallels of both dark energy and positive energy and finding the equilibrium in executing that. 
So by this Street Fighter 6 now physically stating that he has mastered the Satsu no Hado, I look very much forward to seeing Ryu finally putting an end to the suffering between his rivalry between his own dad, Goki, Akuma, and the American Street Fighter, and reaching some sort of resolution. This should be the conclusion between him and his dad. So hopefully that actually happens. I can't wait to see that if they do put that into play. As for this, I can see, ooh, Chun-Li's all low right here. She's really doing a split here. And now that she's much older in her mid-40s, going on 50 here, she hasn't skipped a beat, I see. As for the, the gameplay mechanics, I see that the parry system is somewhat coming back, as well as reversals and some mechanics from Street Fighter V and perhaps some Street Fighter IV. I don't want to speak too much on the mechanics just as of yet, because I want to see what they're going to do. I don't want to assume, but just looking at the characters thus far and looking at the PlayStation website for Street Fighter VI, or I should say the Capcom main website for Street Fighter VI, they've given some good enough information, just enough to keep you... Uh, thirsty for more and that's great that's how it should be the build-up is going to be for the rest of the year all into next year backing up here seeing what else i can take a look at oh yes luke definitely looks better looks so much better than street fighter 5 he looks really fleshed out i'm interested in his storyline as a military professional um, i wonder if he's related to alex I'm not too sure what his story is, so I'm going to be honest about that. I need to look some more into what uh, this Luke character is here. Oh, there she is again. Definitely, definitely will be cosplaying Chin Li right here. I'm so, so happy that her sleeves look so much more realistic right here. Uh, she looks a lot more Chinese, as she should since she's a Chinese woman, she's still rocking her blue pearls. I also notice that she's now wearing uh, kung fu slippers now, traditional kung fu slippers, which is cool. I like that. Can't wait to see how this turns out. Up oh, this loop. Mm. I see this video is a work in process. I'm quite sure the next trailer will be even more detailed. Up, oh, look at that. Wonderful shot of Lee Fun right here. Ooh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. Can't wait. Up oh, here's Ryu. You can tell that under this cherry blossom tree right here, he has found balance. He is practicing and he has found balance and oneness with himself. Up oh, there's the sidekick. Very common of Shotokan Karate. Up oh, there it is again. Yes, definitely gotta I gotta play this again. Yes, those cherry blossoms is a signification that he has become one with nature and he has found his balance. This is great. So truly he has mastered the Sats no Hado. Can't wait to see what happens next. Oh, and this was a happy accident right here. I didn't mean to pause it at this, but I can see where Lee Fun is going in for Buddha Palm. That's a Buddha Palm strike right there. And Chun Li has, of course, caught that with very minimal effort with one hand tied behind her back right there. It's almost as if she's looking at her saying, you still have much to learn. I love it. This is great. This is great. I can't wait to cosplay this. These blue tights. Those white, those white slippers, this is, this is very realistic. Can't wait to send the designs to a lady in Hong Kong who does traditional Chinese clothing like the days of the old 1940s Shanghai, um, China. This is great. I'm going to have a blast. Ooh, and I'm going to have a blast being at the gym. Closing this video out, because I know I'm going a bit lengthy, I will talk about the music. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike had rap music all throughout it and it gave us a hip-hop feel um, back in 1999 and there's a strong following for the game um, in the martial arts gaming world. I'm happy that they're continuing that same theme but with updated hip-hop music. I actually like that 
and I can't and I hope that there's a full version to this song in the backdrop here because the, the music here is actually pretty damn good. We gotta play that. Let's play that. Yeah, y'all wanna win? Let me spin, boy. I done to side, I'm super fly like I'm hanging off the rim, boy. I've been winning for my kinfo, and I put on for my city from the intro. Fight! <sighs> this is awesome. The music is good. All right, look at that balance. It started from the ground up, training, getting wound up, channeling it in and stuff and moving up and down. Crossing over past the ground, I'm pulling down the cup and keep scoring. Years I never thought it was before. When I get tied on my knees, I got it big and deep. I feel like I'm on the left. Yeah, this is good. This is good music, and I'm so excited. I hope you're just excited for me um, as I am excited for this game. Leave your comments on this video. Thank you for watching. This is my beginning analysis of what I see, and I will be coming back with more footage as more of the Street Fighter VI gameplay reveals are coming out piece at a time. Thank you. This is Cookie signing out.